Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to show you how to customize different elements using the new version 2 Cornerstone Builder. So right now let's just go ahead and add a section and we're going to go ahead and add a simple button element. So we click and drag this into the actual content builder. But before we do that, you'll notice that we have two options. There's a classic button and then there's a version 2 button. If we click and drag the classic button in there, we're going to see that it takes all of the presets from what you have in theme options. And this is just like the regular ones that we're used to seeing. We have all of the options here and you'll be able to customize them as much as you can here. With the new version 2, if we click and drag that, you're going to see that we have a bunch of different options that are not available to the other button. You'll see that it's a blank slate for you to start with. So what we'll do is we have different options such as setup, uh, dimensions, the link, uh, the layout of it, the margins, the paddings, the border, the border radius, and box shadow. We can work with text, meaning the primary text and the secondary text, text margins, uh, the formatting of the text, so fonts, sizes, spacing, and heights. We could do different colors, uh, text shadows. We can enable graphics, uh, the particle setup, which most of you might be familiar with, with the headers. So basically, when you hover over top of the button, something could happen with the button. And we can also do a secondary particle setup. Now, all of these might not be available for every element, but for the most part, you're going to have a good amount of options for editing the elements, whether it's a text element, a button element, or um, one of the other elements that are inside of here. So like the alert, uh, content area, there's some new ones. For example, the navigation collapse and drop down, drop down and inline. There's just so many different ones that are available now for us to use inside of our content. So let's go ahead and navigate around this button. Um, so as you'll see at the top right here, we have a horizontal slider that is a basically a quick shortcut to all of the different elements that we can actually edit inside of this element. So for example, if we wanted to edit the text, instead of scrolling all the way down, we just click on text and it'll take us right to it. So we can actually edit the text here to make this the contact us and we can have it just like that. Um, and also if we wanted to you know, work with the graphic, we can go ahead and add a graphic to it by enabling that. And then it'll automatically add a graphic right there. We can even add different interactions and things of that nature. So if you guys wanted to go ahead and you guys can use these as shortcuts, or you can always just go down a line and start editing every different element that you actually need. And then you can go ahead and just work through it there. I would suggest, you know, just making a page and adding a button element and just working with all of the different options to see what they can actually do. Uh, and that way you'll get more familiar with it. So in, in case you guys are wondering, inline flex and flex. Basically it's uh, like an inline block and block. But instead of it being block, it's flex. Now if you're wondering, well, I want it to be centered, and I also want it to, you know, not be the full width of the screen. Well, we can make sure that we do that with this width element, so we can make that 300 pixels wide, use the inline flex element, and then if we scroll down to our margins, we can unlink that, make that auto, and make that auto, and then I think we actually do need it to be flex. So yeah, there we go, we have flex, the width, and then down below we have the auto for the left and right. Makes the button centered, which is what a lot of people want to do. So once you're done with that, you have, like I said, you have your different shortcuts up here. But you may be wondering, well, how do I add a different class to the actual button? And you can do that through the customize section. Once you click on the customize section, you have different um, options for ID and class. You can also hide the button on certain screen sizes. So if you want to hide it on big, you can do that. Or if you just wanted to hide it on small ones, you can do that as well. So many different options for each element. 
and I'm pretty sure that each element has the high during breakpoints option. Um, I've looked through just about all of them and every single one that I've looked through has the hide on different screens. So it's a little bit of a different interface than what you're used to um, as opposed to having this button set up over here. You can see that there's so many different options that are not available using the classic button as opposed to using the actual version 2 button. It may look overwhelming, but it's really it's really not. If you just take your couple minutes and just play around with them to see what they can actually do, you can add different types of URLs. If you want to email somebody, if you want to add a phone number to the button so it's a call to action, you can do that as well. Um, you can make it so this icon is on top by clicking column. You can just do that. And then at that point in time, we can go ahead and make this um, auto. Or we can go ahead and make this 100 pixels. Or we can make this 130 pixels. Just different things that we're able to do with this now. Uh, change the background of it. And we can change it to red when we hover. So there's a lot of different options that are available for all of our different elements. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, and I will see you guys at the next one. Thanks.